In this section, we're turning toward thinking about economics from a business's perspective and the choices that businesses have to make, in particular with regard to production and pricing. So first, we're going to start with price takers, or sometimes they're called perfect competitors, and how they make decisions. But before we hop into this, in this video, we're really just going to focus on the idea of profits and costs and get some of the very basic stuff laid out regarding that. So first, profits. Profit can be simply calculated as revenue minus costs. So from business's perspective, we look at how much revenue do we have coming in, right? How much money do we have coming in from sales of our product? Then we subtract off all the costs involved. Now, there are a couple different ways we can think of profit um, based on different ways we can think of costs. Right? Costs really come in two types. The first is what we call an explicit cost. The explicit cost requires some kind of actual expenditure of cash. Um, so, for example, when I'm paying my workers, right, that is actually money that is leaving my business um, to go to these workers, or when I pay for materials, or when I pay interest on a loan. Right, these are all explicit costs. That is, they require the actual expenditure of cash. And there's also what we could call the implicit cost. These are foregone gains. Right, that is, because I'm operating this business, I am by necessity not doing something else. Right, so for example, if I put all of my money into setting up a lemonade stand outside my house, then the other uses that I could have put that money toward, right, for example, I could put the money in the stock market and earn money that way, right, from stocks performing relatively well. Right? Those gains that I'm giving up are also part of the cost of me running this business. Remembering that from an economic perspective, we really think of costs as being opportunity costs. And that's really what we're trying to get a handle on. Um, so based on these two types of costs, we can think of two different types of profit. Uh, one is the accounting profit. Accounting profit is just revenue minus explicit costs. Now, accounting profit is really um, the historian's way of looking at things, really, in that we're trying to establish um, what do we know in a sense for sure, right? So accountants would naturally be very interested in accounting profit. The idea here being we want to get an accurate reckoning of what has happened um, to the finances of this company. It's also accounting profit that we're interested in when we look at things like taxation. But on the other hand, we could talk about economic profit. Economic profit, we take revenue and we subtract off all the costs. This would include the explicit cost, but it would also include the implicit cost. This is really what economists are interested in. Because really, if we include explicit and implicit costs, we're accounting for the opportunity cost. So, um, just to get a handle on why economists would focus on economic profit, Suppose that you're, you've started this business, and you find out your business has bring in a good $3 every day. Well, for most Americans, $3 a day would not be worth it. If I'm having to spend all of my time running this business to get $3 a day, it's not worth it. So I'm going to shut down, despite the fact that my accounting profit is perfectly fine. You take my revenue, subtract my explicit cost, there is more money coming in than going out. But once I account for my other opportunities, in this case, my time, I could spend that, say, working at another job, earning in all likelihood more than $3 a day. Once we account for that, that implicit cost, we find out my economic profit is negative. So economic profit tells us, um, is this opportunity the best one that's available to you? If your economic profit is positive, then this opportunity is in fact better than the next best opportunity. If your economic profit is negative, that suggests there's a better opportunity out there. There's something else you can do that is a better use of your time and money. If economic profit is exactly zero, that suggests that this isn't that bad of an option. On the other hand, it's not a stellar option either. It's in fact just as good as any other option that's out there. So that's an important point. When we talk um, throughout this next segment, I'll talk about profits being zero a lot. What I actually mean there is that economic profit is zero, which is just that this investment is as good as any other in terms of the return that it offers you. Now let's look a little bit more deeply into costs. Really, remember, what we want to have in mind here are what we call opportunity costs. That is, what are you giving up to take this opportunity? What's the other opportunity that is out there for you? Now we can divide costs a few different ways. One, we've already done it in terms of explicit versus implicit. Another way we could divide costs is between fixed and variable. A fixed cost doesn't depend on your level of output. It's, in effect, a cost of doing business. As long as you're in business at all, you have these fixed costs. Um, so, for example, suppose that I'm renting office space. Right? As long as I'm under the lease to rent that office space, 
I have this fixed rent that I have to pay, regardless how much I use that space. Right, so this would be a fixed cost. It doesn't depend on my level of output. I could leave that office empty, but as long as I've signed the lease, I have to keep paying the rent. Or I could be extremely productive in that office, um, in which case my rent doesn't go up. It's in fact exactly what it was before, so it's a fixed cost. It doesn't depend on whether I'm producing a lot or a little. It doesn't depend on the level of output. Uh, a variable cost does depend on the level of output. So this is something where the more you produce, the higher your variable cost will tend to go. Um, this would tend to include things like labor. If I'm producing more, I have to hire more people or I have to pay them to work more hours. Um, materials would certainly be a variable cost. Um, generally, a lot of our electricity is actually a variable cost as well. Right? The more productive we are, um, the more energy has to go into running our machinery and the like. Now, one thing I would note is that there are some things that, that are kind of fuzzy. Right? After all, there are certain forms of labor that are actually closer to being a fixed cost than a variable cost. Here I think of something like managers. Right? For the most part, you need to have a manager as long as you have anybody working at all. Uh, but you don't need to go out and hire more managers immediately just because you're producing more. Right? So, to a certain degree, management salaries are a fixed cost. Uh, at the same time, to a certain degree, say energy is a fixed cost. When you flip on the light, it doesn't matter how productive you are inside, you get just as much light from that light bulb um, as, if you, as if you're doing absolutely nothing in that room, once again, once you flipped on the light bulb. So fixed and variable cost, it's not something we can draw a really bright line and say these are fixed costs, these are variable costs. It, it's all a matter of does it depend on the level of output or not. Um, and we can certainly break things down in a way that's believable. For the most part, things like rent, land use, and the like are fixed costs. Things like most of your production line labor, energy, materials, are usually variable costs. Though understanding it's kind of a fuzzy line between the two. One note on what we call normal profits. Um, normal profits are really just what we can think of as being the typical amount of profit you can expect to earn from running a business. So, uh, normal profits, then, we can think of as being what you'd earn if you ran a business other than the one you currently are. So they're part of your cost. Because since it's an opportunity, you're giving up somewhere else. So this is where, when I say um, your economic profits are zero, what we actually mean is you're earning a normal level of profits. That is, as much as you'd expect to earn anywhere else. If your economic profits are negative, it very well might be that you're still making a profit in the accounting sense, but you're not making as much as you'd expect to earn somewhere else. If your economic profits are positive, then that means that you're earning a more than normal profit, or an excessive or excess profit, beyond what you would normally expect to earn in other businesses.